So at this point in our project, we have our blog aggregation page set up and we have our individual blog posts set up with the routes overridden. So we're at this point now where we want to implement a pager. But before we do that, you might have noticed if you look at the console, you might be seeing an error like this, cannot read property of the components hero svelte. And if you were to try to do the client side routing, so for instance, go to this blog page, which we have set up, it breaks the route and nothing actually gets redirected there. So what's happening here is we actually forgot, if we look over here, inside our components here. So we're using this special all components magic variable. And we actually forgot to pass that from our base here. So our HTML.svelte, we need to get this information here. So we need to get the all components special prop. And then we just want to pass that in over here to this dynamic component here. So make sure you do that just so you can get that all components. Now, again, keep in mind that this all components name actually might change. I'm still in the process of figuring out this feature. And um, it seems like since this contains all different layouts, all layouts might be a more appropriate name, but stay tuned for that change. So if you get to this point, just check the API documentation to make sure that this variable name is named correctly. So let's come back over here. Let's reload this. Okay. So now it loads without an error. And now we can switch between the blog and the home page and at client side routes. So you can see that the browser is not refreshing and you get a really fast page load. So you can switch between those pretty quick and you can still switch over to the individual blog posts and that still works. So everything's looking good there. Okay. So now we can move on to the pagination. Now I think one of the easiest things to do with pagination is to look at an example of how you can set up pagination. So I have this REPL over here from the Svelte website with a pagination example. Now this is a little bit different than you might do in plenty because you can use these concepts, but we want to make sure that we're getting the server rendered pagination. So you have HTML fallbacks for each one of those pages versus this example here is completely client side. We're actually not even, you see, we're not even updating any URL or anything like that. It's just changing the, the output here and changing the pager. So it's part of the way there, but we're going to have to do a little bit more with plenty. Let's use this as an example to implement it through our project. And the really cool thing that plenty does with pagination is it's not very specific about how you set this up. So it can actually work with any custom pager you want to create. So you can use this example or you can use another example and then you just tie things together in, in two spots and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So let's start with this concept here. So we have some of these things here. Let's, let's copy everything in this script tag and let's bring this over to our blog page. So I'm going to come over here and go into our blog.svelte file, come up to the top here. So we have some of this information here. Let's just go and let's paste this in here and let's talk about what some of this is doing. Let's just get some of the indentation here correct. Well, I guess we're using spaces and tabs. Let's just even this out. That's fine. Okay, so when we come in here, we are defining in our example, we're defining an array of items here. So we're not going to need that array of items because we actually have all content up here. So let's just get rid of this for now. And the current page for now, so you would update this to simulate the page change. So for now, let's just set it to the first page and we can get rid of this comment for now. And then post per page. So we actually want three posts per page. That's exactly following the model that we have over here from our example website. So there's three posts here. The featured post is different, so that doesn't account for that. And if you switch pages here, you would still have the featured post and you have three new posts. So we only need three posts displaying. So we're going to specify posts per page there. And then all posts here, we're actually going to use a filter kind of like we're doing here. So we're looking at the content type posts here. So let's grab this filter and let's bring this up here. And so we're getting the all content variable, but we're going to filter it. So let's just do something like that. We're going to just get posts and that'll give us all the posts. And then if we look down here, if you want to get the length of that, we can check the length of that array and we can get the, the length there and that will give us the number of posts. So it'll be an integer. And then we can do some math so we can say, well, how many pages do we want? And we can do a math ceiling. So round up to the nearest integer um, for all the total posts. So we have five, I believe, divided by the post per page. So three divided by five and we're going to round up. So we're going to have two different pages. So total pages will be two. The first page will have three posts on it and the second page will have two. It would have three, but there's only two remaining posts. And then we're going to set ranges on the upper and the lower end. So we have post range high. So the high range is going to be the current page. So one in this case is going to start that. 
times the post per page, so one times three. So the third post will be the high range, and the low range will be the post range high minus the post per page. So, so post range high being three, and then minus the post per page three, so it would be zero to three. And that'll give us the first three items there. And then we want a way to update our current page. So when we click the new pages, we actually want to set the current page here. So we make a function here called set the current page using the arrow syntax. And we'll take in a new page here, and we'll basically set the current page, so this value here, to the new page value here. Okay, so that looks okay. And then let's come down here and let's take a look at this. So no longer do we want to do the filtering here. We can actually just use the all posts variable that we created above. So we can say all posts. Now this has already been filtered, so that's nice. And it's the same object, so this all these post field, image, source, all that stuff is still available because we're actually getting all the posts from the same content source there. So that's okay. But then let's take a look at our example here. We're going to want to actually filter our, our loop. So right now we're doing a loop of all the posts. And instead of just blindly putting all the posts there, we want only the posts that are within the current range. So I'm going to copy this. I'll come down here. I'll make an if statement. That says if i is greater than or equal to the post range low and i is less than the post range high then display the post now we don't have an i so i is the increment for this post so if there's five posts it would be one through five um, actually zero through five because it's zero base so we have to make sure we get that value there so we're getting the post object and the index of it and then let's come back down here let's change the nesting here and let's just close our if statement at the bottom of this okay all right so now we have that range there and then you know you want to actually tie this information into the paginated output as well but we'll get to that in a second let's see if we have this part working so far so let's come back over here to our posts so right now we have five posts displaying Let's see if we can refresh and see if there's only three. Okay, so now there's only three posts displaying because it's only what's within that specific range. If we were to change this here, this top value, so if we were to get the current page two, let's try that, save. And so we have these first three posts here. Let's see what happens when we change the page there. So now we have the second or the last two posts there. So that that is working that pager is generally working you notice now you know the url and nothing's changing we're just changing that manually here but at least that's kind of working there so let's set that back now our pager here we defined in this other component over here this hard-coded component so it, is, it has no awareness at this moment how many pages there are or how to do that so if we look over here it's correct because we copy the html there's two pages here but if we add more blog posts we want that to automatically spring up to three pages four pages five pages and we want it to be aware of what page that it's currently on so if we come back over here we're going to have to pass our current page and our total pages to that pager so we can get those values so let's come back over here to where our page is defined and let's pass our current page and our total pages to our pager. And then let's go over to our pagination component that we defined and let's import those. So let's do a script tag at the top. And let's do export let current page and total pages. So just getting the named props that we sent from the other file there. Now let's think about this pagination. Let's come back over here. So we have a couple of different things here. So if we look at how this one works, so we have a couple controls. We have the, the main pages that we have displayed here, and then we have controls to do a previous page or to go to the first page, which is the same thing because there's only a couple pages here, so it works that way. But it, you could think if there was you know four or five pages here, doing previous would increment it one way. You know If you're on page four, it would go to three, two, one, versus if you're on four and you hit this one, it'll go all the way from four to one. So we wanna have both of those things working there. So if we come over here, we're gonna look at this. First of all, we can get rid of some of this information here. We can bring this all the way back to just forward slash blog, that's okay. Now the first page is going to be like that. So that's, that's great. So we're gonna to go to the root of the blog, which would be that one. So that actually can stay as it is. 
Now the previous page, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to. So right now they're doing something, this page link class, and then we have a page one and a page two. So we don't need both of those, right? Because those are gonna happen dynamically. So let's get rid of page two here. And I'm gonna put this inside of an each loop. So we're gonna say for each, for each, and then we'll do array of the total pages as underscore, because we're not going to use that value i, so we want that index of that value. And this just allows us to actually get, you know, the page one, two, three, however many pages there are in the total pages, so there's only two, so it allows us to get those. And then we're gonna come over here and let's change this. So this isn't gonna be that long URL. And this is going to become i, and this will be i as well. And then we can end our each block here. And let's move this like that. So let's move this on one line here, and let's just do something like this. We could probably get more clever with it, but for now, I think this will just be the easiest thing to do. Let's move this up here. So this is the active one. So let's do something like if current page equals i, so if the active page, then we want this active class here. So we'll add it like that and we'll close, and actually let's say else. So if it's not that one, then we want something like this, the same thing, but without the active class. So we'll get rid of that. And then we can close that if statement like that. And let's just come here and we're using tabs. I don't know, tab spaces, we're using both. And we'll save that. And then down here, let's just come and let's change this again. So we're going to get rid of this. And we'll do the next in a little bit, but let's just come down here and come here and we'll just change this so it's blog. And this will just be the value of total pages. And let's save that for now and see what we're working with here. So that's saved. Come back over to our blog page. Let's reload this. Okay. So we changed the pager so you can see it goes zero to one. So we will have to change that index as well. But um, so it starts on page one, page zero is not going to be found. So some of those things are messed up there. All right, let's come through here and change that again. So let's come here and let's just do this as i plus one and these will all be i plus one as well. Okay, save that, come back here. We don't have blog zero, that's not a page, okay. All right, so now we do one and two. All right, so come back over here and let's take a look at the blog again. So we have this set current page function here, right? So we could come in here and let's pass this here. And we'll come to pagination and we'll get set current page. And then we could just do something like on click set current page and do something like i plus one. So you could copy that. And let's put that here. Save that. And it looks like we're missing a bracket here, so let's make sure we close that off and save. Okay, 
come here and we don't have a server blog two yet so we come blog one and okay so now the blogs are changing so you see that we're paginating these so if we change this we have one two and three and then the second page just has one and two so that is working there now you should sort your blog posts so if you get things out of the all content object sometimes things can get out of order so determine if you want to sort them alphabetically or by date or whatever there's a lot of different things you can do and i have some examples on github that can show you how to do that but let's just go forward with this so we have something that's moving here now we really want to fix these so these are going to the incorrect places right now and we want to fix these actually these should work so although we didn't add on clicks for them so let's take a look over here um, we're actually going to not use the on clicks ultimately I just wanted to show how that works so I'm not going to go and add those yet but you can basically see how you can set up a client side uh, loading of this information the problem is if you were to come here and if you were to reload this page you see that the server is not found so there was no HTML fallback for that blog two page Similarly, there's actually, if you go to the one here, uh, the same thing's gonna happen. So we wanna make sure that we're getting those fallback pages from our server. So we have to actually set plenty up to be a little bit aware of this. So let me show you how you can go about doing that. Come back over here and in our main plenty.json configuration file, we're gonna to wanna to target this blog content type. So we have blog. Now, if you look in our content folder, it is our content, it's our single content type blog.json, so blog, and we're going to say, well, blog is going to have the path blog, but it's also going to have pagination. Now, this is the cool part. Um, you can pass the value that has the total pages to this replacement pattern, so it allows you to find whatever variable you want um, and then it will work with this content source. So basically I'm gonna come back over here to our main page that serves us up and that is our blog.svel file. Now we named our variable total pages. You can name this something else. You could structure this completely different, but just make sure that your server side knows how many pages are going to be available. Now it's cool, you don't actually have to calculate this, this server side. It would be a lot easier to actually force someone to actually come and figure out what type of content they're filtering on, figure out how many pieces of those content are there, et cetera. But we're allowing you to do it all client side, figure it all out. And then when we build, we'll go and find that information based on the variable that you give. So we'll pass the total pages variable here, total pages to our pagination here. And then if I save that, that connects our server side to know how many pages to build out in pagination. And then on the front end, to actually know what current page we're getting here, we can get that out of the content object. So let's come back over to our HTML that's file. Let's make sure we first pass that. So we have this content object here at the top that we get from our router, and we typically spread that into our dynamic components. Make sure that you also pass it as an individual component. So we're actually passing it twice here. You could just adjust this if you wanted to, but make sure you pass the content object there. And then if we go back to our blog.svel file, we can get that content object. So content, and down here, we want to get the pager out of our content. So we'll have a default property called content pager, and we set that to our current page. Now, we also want to make sure that the current page is reactive because we're not going to be going and setting this anymore. We're actually just going to be updating this based on values from our content source. So we can actually come here and let's change this to dollar sign colon, save that. And let's go back over to our pagination and let's get rid of this on click behavior. We don't need this anymore. We can get this right from the routes directly. So let's delete that as well. And okay. And then let's come down here and let's get rid of this one. Okay, save that. All right, we have a little bit of an error here. Let me see what's going on. Oh, I think I deleted too much there. Okay, yeah, I deleted that end of that HTML element. Make sure you just delete the on click there. So that, save that. And that built without a problem. Let's come back to our site. Let's refresh this. And 
I actually got the API incorrect over here. So this is not pagination, it's paginate. It's a, a verb. So paginate total pages. So save that. Um, that's why, so the route was trying to get replaced here. That's not correct. Let's try to reload this again. Give it a second. Okay, so I'm getting some errors here. So I'm noticing some things here. So I'm still setting the current page, but we deleted that information there. So let's get rid of that for now. Save that. And let's come back over here to our blog. We don't need set current page anymore. So I can save that. I just did a little cleanup around the function that we used to use to set the current page. We don't need that anymore. So I removed it down here from where we were passing into paginated component. I removed it from the pagination component up here and where it was referenced throughout. And then we have this converted up here to be reactive using this dollar colon syntax. And if I save that and it rebuilds the site and I come back over here, we can now reload our blog page. And if we change the pagination here, it updates and it goes to the new page and you can change it back and it goes back as well. Now, if I go to page two, for instance, and I do a hard refresh, I'm going to do control R to refresh the page. You'll see up here that it refreshes and the page is still valid here. So they have HTML fallbacks for each one of these pages. So page one has it as well. And then I can even go back to the first blog page. So if I can go all the way to the first and now I'll get rid of the one here so you can have a base page if you want. And if you do that, you see that you get this undefined information here and you're not getting any blogs. So it goes two, one. If I try to go to the last page here, that'll send me to two. And if I try to go to the first, it goes to the one without the blog, but I'm getting the undefined here. And these blog posts aren't showing up. So let's take a look at what's going on there. Let's go to our pagination. Oh, so we wanna get rid of this trailing forward slash there. So our client side routes don't have a trailing forward slash. So if I come back over here and I reload this, so our server route picks up with the forward slash, that's fine. And now we can go through two and let's try to go all the way to the front again. Okay, so now it's picking that up. It gets rid of the undefined. So we're looking good there. Let's come back over here. Now let's fix the previous and the next functionality here. So if we look back over here, they're not actually working. So this is completely grayed out here. And then this one, although it says it's going to page two, so we don't actually have a blog forward slash page forward slash two, it just goes blog forward slash two. So let's come back over here and take a look at those. So for this, we want to basically say, give us the current page minus one. Now we wanna make sure that that route exists. So if we are on a page that does not exist, we want to disable it. So right now we're hard coding the disabled class. That's why it's, it's actually graying this out over here. You can never click this one, but we want to conditionally do that if we're on the first page. So let's come over here. Let's say if current page minus one is greater than zero, yep, then we will do this without the disabled class. So grab this. Actually, first let's copy this whole section because we're just gonna duplicate this. So we'll do an end if, actually an else rather here. And we'll end the if down here. And so if current page minus one is greater than zero, and let's put this in parentheses to make this really clear. Then let's get rid of this disabled class here. And we want the href to be present and we'll say this equals blog forward slash current page minus one. And we can save that. And this one doesn't really need an href because this actually is not going to be used because it's disabled. Although you might want to add one just to get the Svelte compiler to stop yelling at you. But let's just save this like that for now. And let's come over here and reload this. Okay, so on this, when we're on the second page, this will indeed take us to the first page. So you see that that works. Um, and then it goes disabled when you're on the first page, you can't actually go to that. 
uh, anymore, so that's good. Now, if there were four pages, so say we're on the fourth, it should go to the third page, so hopefully that works. And we wanna do something similar over here for this. So this is going to page two, but it's hard-coded right now. And the, the route's incorrect, so let's fix that. We're gonna do something similar. So I'm gonna copy this if statement. I'm gonna to go to where this next is. So this is the next button. Let's come here and let's do an if statement. Whoops. Do it like this. But this time, instead of current page minus one, we're gonna say current page plus one. And we wanna make sure that that's less than or equal to the total pages. So we don't want this to page beyond the total pages. So let's see here, did I? Oh, so it's breaking the compiler right now because I don't have my if statement finished. So let's do the same thing we did before. Let's grab this and let's paste it again. Let's do an else statement. And let's finish our if statement down here. Okay, now again, this doesn't need to have a real path here since we're gonna give it the disabled class. So let's come back up here and we have li page item disabled. So we'll copy that. And if you come down here, so this one down here, we're going to give that like that. And instead of hard coding this item here, we're going to put in the value current page plus one. We need the same thing above. So copy that. And we'll save that. And this actually should be less than or equal to, I changed it because I was trying to fix the compiler there. Okay, so we'll save that. And let's go back to our page here and reload this. We should still get this going to, oh, so it's trying to go to three, so that's not gonna work. Um, let's take a look. So I think, it, maybe I did have it right. So current page, oh, because it's zero base, okay. Yes, so less than total pages, save that, reload this. Now we should get it to two, and if we go to page two, hmm. oh, I put this on the wrong, okay, so this is supposed to, sorry. This is supposed to go here on the else statement to that and come back here, reload this one more time. And let's see, okay, so now when we're on page two, this is disabled, but if we go to page one, it is disabled because this is indeed supposed to be this. Okay, save, hopefully we got it right this time. Let's see what's going on here, reload. Okay, so now we can go to page two if we're on page one, but if we're on page two, it becomes disabled. Okay, and we can go one more forward if we're on page two. When we go to page one, that should be disabled there. Now you can do the same thing with these buttons here. It's pretty much the same process, so we could actually expand this whole thing, and we could do something like this. Let's grab this last section here, and let's put this inside like that, and let's grab it again and put it in the else, but this time give it the disabled class like this. And paste that, save that, and then let's do the same thing up here. So we have this first here. Let's grab this and put it inside the if statement. Let's put it before the element there and make sure we still have it copied. And in the else, put it before, but add the disabled class. Grab that, save that, and just to make the compiler happy, although it's not going to be used, let's just grab this link here so we can give it a link down here. Actually, we need the whole href because that's completely missing. And we'll save that. Okay, save, rebuild, and let's come back over here and try it one more time. So when we're on page one, you can't go any farther, you can't go to the first page because you're already there, you can't go to this. When you're on page two, you can't go any farther to the right, so it disables these ones, but you can go to the left. Okay, and then if you were to add more blog posts, it should just add more pages in here. 
maybe we should test that out. Let's come back over here to our code. Let's save our work here. So git add, git commit, add pager. And go back to our server, make sure that's still running. Okay, and then in our content here, let's come up here and let's look in our posts and let's copy post three. So copy and we'll paste and post three will become post six. Oops. Rename post six and that's all fine and let's just do one more so that'll give us two full pages but let's just copy the first one one more time and put it on the very last page right so we'll paste and rename this will be post seven okay so now if we come here and reload this now we should have three pages. Okay, so right now we can use either pages on either side, but if we go to the last page, there should be one post there. All right, there's one post there. And if you go before, there's three full posts. And if you go one more, there's three full posts. You can't go any more to the left. Uh, if you can go this way, you can increment one over. You can increment one more over all the way to the last page, and then you can't go any more. You can go all the way to the first page, and you can go all the way to the last page. So it's all working and it's all server rendered. So I can reload this page and the third page loads. I can go to the second page, I can reload it. I can copy this link and I could send it to somebody. Well, not this specific link because it's a local host, but once you build the site out, you could copy it and send it to someone and they get the exact page output that you're giving them. So that's it for the paged output. And hopefully that's a intuitive way for you to set up a pager in your projects and you can start using that feature going forward. Next, we'll look into some of this other internal content here. So we'll look at like the pricing page and the contact and FAQ, and we'll build out some more components there, and we'll finish up some of the styling, and then hopefully we'll have this site in a pretty good spot. All right, thanks for watching this.